Hi everyone, I've got another project today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this bowl. It uses a technique similar to colour dilution. Welcome to Rocker Ray's Art. My name is Jeff, and you'll see Anne in the background here doing a bit of work as well. Um, if you haven't been here before and you like the video, please subscribe and turn on your notifications. And um, please put any comments or questions in the comments area because I'd love to answer them. What we're going to be making today is a shallow bowl using the uh, colour dilution technique. You may be familiar with this, but we're going to do it a little bit different today. Basically, I'm going to be making just a small shallow bowl, which will be slumped in this mould. And it'll be made out of 2mm transparent light aqua. That's uh, Bullseye 1408. 3mm clear. And a bunch of little dots. And I do have another video where I show you how to make these. Um, and there'll be a link in the description for that. These are made out of, oh, I'm going to drop them everywhere, these are made out of dense white, which is Bullseye 0313. Now the dots I'm using are ones I've got left over from other projects because in another video I did show you how dense white is very difficult or needs a higher temperature to get it to nice and round. Um, so all I've got to do is refuse these to round them off properly. Um, that's about it. We'll get on now and I'll cut all the material. So while I do have a lot of small dots of the dense white already, I do need a few more I think and I'll just quickly show you how I do this. So I've, I've got a strip here, I've, I've, it's about 20 mils wide, I've scored it down there. Now I'm going to turn it on the side and I'm going to cut random widths because I do want um, a mixture of sizes of these so it gives some uh, organic look to the whole piece. Now I'll go ahead and cut all those up and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the cutting. When it comes to our um, other two pieces I'm just going to base the size around this piece of scrap. Well, it's not exactly scrap. And this is about 190 mil here, so I'm going to square this off all at 190 mil. I've already marked this because um, the ruler here only goes to about 150. And I've already marked this. And just cut that. And the same with the 3 mil. There we have our two pieces. But the first thing we've got to do is make up those little dots. Now strictly speaking you don't have to fire them first. You could just lay them all up on this at whatever shape they are. But I'm looking for a more rounded um, feel to this, a bit softer feel. So that's why I am going to round mine off quite a bit before I lay this up. Now I'll go away and um, make up all those little dots and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to lay it all up. Just quickly before I put this in the kiln I thought I'd just show you how I laid it up. Um, dense white is difficult to say the least to get it to round off. So I've put the newer pieces that I cut in the middle of the kiln where it will be the hottest. Hopefully when everything is finished these things will all be very similar. Um, if this was black I wouldn't have to worry about this so much but uh, yeah with this dense white you really do have to consider the temperature a bit more. 
These will go up to a high full fuse and they'll be held there for quite a while to get them to fuse properly. So tomorrow morning, once this is all out of the kiln, we'll continue and I will finish laying this up for the final fuse. It's the next morning and uh, everything's been fully fused. As you can see here, we've got all our little uh, pieces of dense white. Some are not uh, round, but that doesn't really matter that much. I don't mind a bit of variation. And uh, we've got quite a variation in size there. Now we've got the fun part. You can see here I have cleaned both my large pieces of glass here. I've got the 2 mil turquoise on the bottom, the 3 mil clear on the top, and I've just laid all of those little pieces of dense white over the top. The way I do it is I just line up these two and it may get out of whack while I'm putting even fixing everything on top, but it doesn't matter. I just straighten it up again before I put it in the kiln. And then I will spread these all out on the shelf with a little bit of space between each one. It doesn't matter if some touch, but uh, try and keep a little bit of space between each one and get a nice spread across the, um, the piece there. Now, um, I'll do all of this and then I'll come back and we'll put it in the kiln. So there we are, it took a little while, it's a little bit tedious, but I find it easier just using a little brush to move things around, put them all on there to start off with and just move them all into place. Um, that's fairly random and I'm happy with that. So um, I'll move that over to the kiln, make sure that's lined up, and then I'll put it in for a full, full fuse. And then um, when it's done, we'll be back and I'll show you the, uh, the end result of that. Now we're getting into the better parts. This has all been fused up. Took it out of the kiln this morning. I've cleaned it all up. And you can see if you look at the top there how everything is fused well. And you might notice some, some that are just slightly greyer than the white, these brighter white. They are actually opal, not dense white. Um, I decided that I might mix it up a little bit and um, it looks good and then when you turn it over you can see the back and you can see how the white has now picked up the tint of that backing layer and I'll try and get it into the right position here for you so you can see they all look like little pebbles below the water now you could you know you could put any color you like on here you don't have to use white and you can also use any color you like on the back. Uh, the lilac looks nice, um, so that's really up to you. Now, I, and by the way, something I should say, you can see the edge has a slight ripple. I actually like that. You could square all that up if you like before you put it into the kiln. Now, I'm not going to do that. I am just going to um, basically uh, prepare the mold, put that in the mold, and uh, slump it and tomorrow we will have a finished piece Well, it is the next day and the bowl is out of the kiln and I'm very happy with it. Now, it does take a little bit to make this bowl. You do have to fuse all the dots. You then do have to fuse the base with the dots all together and then you have to slump it. If you wanted to coal work the edges, that would be another step that you would have to go through. But in the end, I think it is well worth it. I think it gives a really good result, as you'll see shortly 
and it's open to some in some variation changing the colors as I said before changing the colors of the dots changing the shape so it, it is open to a lot of variation as you can see here it really doesn't disappoint it has a beautiful light and um, you could make this to fit almost any decor and a suggestion by Ann was to fuse it or I should say slump it the other way around I think that would give a good result so I hope you enjoyed that I did I think it was well worth the effort and uh, that's going to make a great addition into our gallery if you like this video and you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and if you want to see a couple more videos right now um, you'll find some suggestions up the top and down the bottom so until the next video I'll have to say bye for now